you might have realized that the kind of simulation pitfalls we discussed are so many and seemingly so difficult that we might get put off and never perform any simulation attempt ever again. So, just to make sure that you stay hopeful, I would like to start with, with a small joke regarding a falling man while falling down towards the ground. He is hopeful that he would survive. And he says, See, I am not dead yet. So, in today's module, we are going to start with that as the use case and we are going to look at the development of system simulation. If you look at this figure, it shows a man falling from a ladder. For the sake of generality, we can say that a man falls from the height h, the time it takes for him to strike the ground is t, his initial velocity is v, the initial height is given by s and the acceleration with which he falls on the ground is typically well understood minus 32 feet per second square. This is the information that we have been given with. However, we have not been provided with the mass of the individual, the air resistance that could be at play and the location where this situation is taking place. This equation that is h is equal to half a t square plus v t plus s describes the mathematical model of a falling man scenario. The simulation involving the implementation of it in C program is shown here where we have a simple loop that runs for the time till the height of the falling man literally becomes equal to the ground level. This is the simulated output shown through the tabular form and through this graph. So what have we concluded from the scenario? We conclude that if we want to simulate a real world situation, we need to model it. In this case, it was modeled using a mathematical equation. We need to first determine if the mathematical equation truly describes the real world environment. Then we need to actually implement it. While implementing, we need to make sure that whatever we are implementing truly follows the model. Then we need to determine that the desirable outcome of this real world system simulation is described well. For example, here, are we interested in knowing how much injury does this man get? Or with what force does this man strike the ground? We can also include some variety to the situation in which we can either change the height, change the speed according to say the effect of the air which blows or the obstructions which this gentleman comes across while falling down. All these can be encompassed through formal representation of the development process. We shall go through these one by one. The problem formulation actually identifies controllable and uncontrollable inputs. In the situation here, when exactly does this man fall down is an uncontrollable input. But at what height from this man falls down is the controllable input. What are we interested in? Do we wish to collect the force with which he strikes the ground? 
it is the what that we want to determine in the simulation output. And how do we want to measure it? For example, the time that we wish to determine for a falling man, does it involve the time that he starts to fall or the time in the air or the time it takes for him to reach a certain height and then fall? It will have a direct impact on the cost and the accuracy of the simulation system. The implementation that we saw in the form of a C program is done through a rigorous process of codification. It is not always possible to determine that seemingly a semantically and syntactically correct code is actually modeling what we want to measure. For that, we need certain processes of validation, verification, and if there is a need to perform calibration. Validation is actually determining. Is it the right system? The equation that you just saw, does this equation truly emulate the real world environment? The program that you saw, does it follow the mathematical equation as such? And can we tweak with the parameters, change their ranges, change their values, so that the simulated data closely follows the real world data? We could perform different height, different speeds, different acceleration scenarios as what if analysis. It is also important to look at the sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity implies the effect of certain inputs to the outputs. The outputs are dependent not only to the inputs as such, but also to the outputs of the inputs themselves. The overall life cycle of the simulation development involves, as I said earlier, the descriptive part the prescriptive part. Together with description and prescription, we actually could see the post-prescription part where the analysis of what-if and sensitivity could be the direct consequence of what goals we define, what we want to measure, what calibration techniques have we chosen, and what were the initial baseline values.